Okay, so in this video, we will give a short proof of the factor or zero theorem. Now, if you remember, the result says if f of x is a polynomial, then x minus a, where a is a real number, is a factor of f of x, if and only if f of a is equal to zero. Before we can look at how we can prove this, first, let's quickly go over the idea of the degree of a polynomial. So let's start with this polynomial, f of x, say, is 2x cubed minus 5x squared plus 8x plus 7. Well, if you ask what is the degree here, and it's written as deg, but it means the degree of the polynomial f, the degree is simply the largest power of x that shows up in the polynomial. Well, here, the largest power of x is 3, so the degree of f is equal to 3. What if we dropped this term and kept only the other three terms? So what if we take now f of x to be negative 5x squared plus 8x plus 7? Now, the degree of our polynomial, f, is 2. As 2 is now the largest power of x that shows up in our polynomial, what if we dropped this term? and only kept 8x plus 7. Well, now we have a degree that is 1, as x is x to the 1, so the largest power of x that shows up is 1, so the degree is 1, and what if now we drop 8x and only keep 7? Now we have a constant polynomial, f of x is always equal to 7 for any value of x, and we ask, well, what is the degree of this polynomial? Well, there is no x term. So what is the largest power of x? Well, if you think of it, a constant term is times x to the 0, as x to the 0 is equal to 1. So when the x is missing, it's really because it's x to the 0. And so when you have a constant polynomial, its degree is equal to 0. And vice versa, if the degree of a polynomial is 0, it is a constant polynomial. Now let's see how the idea of a degree fits in with the idea of long division. Let's look at two very short examples. Let's divide, say, x cubed plus 1 by x squared plus 1. And let's see what comes out of this. We have here a degree 3 polynomial and we're dividing by a degree 2 polynomial. So what times x squared is x cubed? x. Multiply by all of x, and you get x cubed plus x. Subtract, and you get minus x plus 1. And you see that the degree now is 1 here. The degree here is 2, and that is the end of our long division. It's over. So the idea is, well, how do we write the result of this? Well, this means that x cubed plus 1 equals the divisor x squared plus 1 times the quotient x plus the remainder negative x plus 1. So this is, we're going to call this r of x, the remainder. And this is our quotient, q of x. This was the divisor x squared plus 1. And if you notice, you divide x cubed plus 1 by x squared plus 1, and the remainder has degree 1, which is strictly less than 2. And this is always the... Um, what signifies the end of long division. You stop when the remainder has a degree strictly smaller than the divisor. So here 1 is less than 2, and this is the end of long division. What if we divide now x cubed plus 1 by x plus 1, or I'll go with, say, x plus 2, a linear polynomial. Let's see what comes out now. The 
degree of our divisor is 1, which will mean that our remainder must have degrees strictly less than 1, therefore it must be a degree 0 polynomial, so we'll have here a constant remainder. Let's see what comes out. So, what times x is x cubed, x squared, multiply out, you get x cubed plus 2x squared, subtract, these two cancel, and you're left with negative 2x squared plus 1. And you see now the degree here is 2, the degree here is 1, as 2 is larger than 1, we have to repeat. What times x is negative 2x squared? Negative 2x, multiply out, subtract, these two cancel, negative negative 4x is 4x, plus 1. And once again we have here a degree 1, the degree is 1, 1 is equal to 1, still too big, and we repeat. What times x is 4x? Well, plus 4. Multiply by 4, you get 4x plus 8. And we subtract, and we're left with 1 minus 8, which is negative 7. And now, this is a constant, so its degree is 0. Our divisor is degree 1, 0 is strictly less than 1, and so we're done with the long division. And the conclusion is that x cubed plus 1 is equal to the divisor x plus 2 times the quotient x squared minus 2x plus 4. So we call this q of x, a quotient coming out of our long division, plus the remainder, and here it is, negative 7. And it is a constant polynomial, as, again, we were dividing by a linear polynomial, degree 1, the remainder must have degrees strictly smaller than the divisor, and the only non-negative integer, strictly less than 1, is 0, so it must be a constant remainder. And that is the key observation that will lead us to a very easy proof of the factor theorem. So let's now look at this example in more general context. Suppose we have two polynomials f of x, and we have a linear polynomial x minus a, where a is a real number. And what if we divide f of x by x minus a? Well, long division will tell us that f of x will be x minus a times the quotient q of x, so this part, plus the remainder, but now here's where it's interesting, right? If you divide by a linear polynomial, a degree 1 polynomial, the remainder will have degree strictly smaller than 1, and the only non-negative integer that is less than 1 is 0. So it must be a constant remainder. Well, let's call it C here. And that is, again, the result of long division. Well, a natural question to ask is, what is the value of this constant? Because this must be true for any polynomial f and any real number a. Divide the polynomial by a linear polynomial, degree 1, you must have a degree 0 remainder, so it must be a constant polynomial. But as this is true for any x, we can replace x by a and see what comes out to try and solve for the constant value of c. So f of a is equal to, well, a minus a times q of a plus the constant term. But no matter what the value of q of a is, it's multiplied by a minus a, which is 0. So the whole thing here is 0, which means that f of a, so the value of f at a, is equal to the constant term, the remainder of our long division. And now we can substitute back in the original equality. 
And this is really the crux of the argument. So if you divide any polynomial f of x by a linear polynomial of the form x minus a, well, you'll have x minus a times the quotient coming out of the long division plus a constant remainder, but not any constant. It is the value of the polynomial at a. And let's see why, essentially, this observation proves the factor theorem. Well, what was the factor theorem? The factor, also sometimes called the zero theorem. Well, the result says that x minus a, where a is a fixed number, is a factor of f of x. If and only if the value of f at a is equal to zero. This is why here I use the words factor and zero to show that a factor gives you a zero and a zero gives you a factor. So you can go back and forth. x minus a is a factor of f of x implies that f of a is zero. But conversely, if f of a is zero, automatically x minus a is a factor of f of x. And this is clear now from this equality. Think of it. For any polynomial f and any real number a, it is true that f of x equals x minus a times the quotient plus f at a. Well, now look at this. The only way for x minus a to be a factor of f of x, if you think of it, this means f of x would be x minus a times some other polynomial. So if x minus a is a factor of f of x, then f of x must be x minus a times some other polynomial, and there can't be anything else. So this has to go away. And now x minus a is a factor of f of x. So you see the only way for x minus a to be a factor of f of x is for this term to be gone, which means that well, how can this go away? Well, if f of a is equal to 0. If f of a is 0, then this term goes away. And then f of x is simply x minus a times q of x. Therefore, x minus a is a factor of f of x. And that's it. And for us, we'll usually use it in this direction. We're going to look for a factor of a polynomial, which very often is hard to find by inspection. So instead we'll ask, can we find a value of x where f at that value is equal to 0? And this will usually be easier to find. So if you find a value of x that makes the polynomial equal to 0, automatically you have a free factor. And the free factor is x minus this value. So for example, if f of 3 was equal to 0, your free factor for f of x would be x minus 3. If f of minus 3 was equal to 0, then you have to be careful. The value of a now is negative 3, so your factor would be x minus a. As a is negative 3, you would end up with x plus 3. And that's it.